The Kingdom of Bunyoro Kitara was established following the collapse of the Empire of Kitara in the 16th century. Bunyoro rose to power by controlling a number of the holiest shrines in the region and the lucrative Kibiro salt works of Lake Albert. Mparo in Hoima holds a sacred place in the history of the kingdom. It's here where Kabalega's remains were interred. As part of the lasting colonial vestiges, in front of the gates to the tombs is a cone-shaped monument painted in black and white. It is here in 1871 where a British explorer, Emin Pasha, met Kabalega. Kabalega's burial ground is peppered with royal regalia, lion leopard skins, drums, spears, and wooden stools. Bronze and iron spears handed down from the Chwezi and Bito dynasties are kept at the royal tomb. Corn-shaped crowns, flutes, and necklaces worn by kings in the Chwezi dynasty are preserved here. Kabalega had a palace here at Imparo and relied on these hills to give him a towering view of the enemy force. At the peak of his power, Kabalega ruled over Mboga in the current day DRC where he established a county, Busongora and Buhweju in Ankole, Bunyala, Bugerere and Buruli. Kitara was an empire compared with other empires you have known. And more, more if we, were, we can narrow it to Africa, it was one of the biggest empire in Africa, apart from the empire in South Africa, uh, the Zulu. And uh, it had a very large area it was managing. It is said before the Bazoom came here, Bunyoro Kitare was one single entity. But when Omkama Kawalega resisted the imperialists, Bunyoro had to pay the price. The population, the war had actually reduced the population from 2.5 million people to 100,000. In 1899, Kawalega was captured in Lango by the British and taken to Seychelles, where he died in 1923 at the age of 70. But the scorched earth war tactics plague Pestilence and famine left Bunyoro on the cliff. Yes, it was genocide. They were killed during the war. And it is said, this Maxine gun you, they, they talk about was tested on Bunyoro here. Today his grandson, Solomon Iguru Gafabusa, sits on the throne at Karuzika Palace. Unlike last year, he marked his 26th anniversary quietly as the COVID-19 pandemic kept away legends of his subjects who usually attend. There are two major drums in the kingdom. And which are most important in the kingdom. Because if those two drums are not there, they are known as Mpango. If they are not there, there is no kingdom. Bunyoro straddles the Albertine region, teeming with wildlife, oil and gas. Today, the Omkama has put in place a team of elders to herald change in the kingdom. And of course then, um, finally, there's need for us to work together. All the leaders in, in, in Bunyoro, all the leaders, the political leaders, the local leaders, the cultural leaders, the religious leaders, we have to work together to see that we... Um, we achieve this dream. And we should, of course, the, the most important thing is for us to know what is the goal, what we want to achieve. The, 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 what we need to achieve is to, um, to make Winyoro great again, to make it retain, um, a, 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 a achieve that glory it had in the past. We have, all of us have to understand how are we are going to do it, have the same vision. The Royal Commission is not uh, a new creation. Uh, it existed in the past. Uh, most of you will recall that uh, in 1893, in December, when uh, Omkama Kabalega received an ultimatum from the British 
uh, to do two things. One, to supply ivory to the queen, and the other one was to supply regular assault to Buganda. He did not immediately go to war. He commissioned his royal commission to come and advise him on how to proceed, whether he should go to war or not. And indeed, it was decided that he should go to war because uh, those were not fair. <laughs> those were not fair commands, as it were. So therefore, uh, when matters of a strategic nature uh, are to be considered by the Omukama, indeed he uh, sets up, appoints people to occupy uh, this position of Akakura Tokobunanu or Real Commission. Hoima has also been granted the status of an oil city. However, it faces a number of challenges. But there is a glimmer of hope. Today, Bunyoro has some of the best paved roads in the country and an international airport is under construction in Kikube district. Kamas is also booming. Well, the, the city is an area where people, after having worked, you know, you come and relax, uh, recreation. Uh, it, it is uh, it's going to be an opportunity where uh, high quality goods are assembled so that the industry can pick from there. So uh, the city should be, is, is going to benefit the local population because it's going to be the market, the collecting center of various commodities. Uh, when you look at uh, the sites which we have, we have, uh, I think we are the brand of the kingship in this, uh, in this country. Uh, we have a very rich her heritage. We, we have so many tourist attraction centers in Bunyoro. And I think uh, when we combine the culture uh, with our history, we can easily tap into that tourism. A fulcrum of the past and present, the king must confront a painful history, but embrace the modern era to seek opportunities for his subjects. Emmanuel Mutaizibwa, NTV.